You've got people who are retirement age in Europe today suffering, and the middle class suffers. I mean, what you know, when you go over to Europe and go to you know Italy or France, a hundred thousand lira might have bought a nice pair of shoes, but the equivalent of a hundred euro don't buy anything. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You know, the prices have gone up, the costs have gone up, and Europe's suffering the same way we are in the United States. A lot of the manufacturing has moved to uh, China. China's got the whole, this whole process is a move to slavery. Multinational corporations have figured out how to get a new round of slaves in place. Now you're cutting to the chase here. Yeah, don't basically hold Basically, you're back. saying that's. <laughs> I mean, you're basically that is the end game that's of what's end, going yes, on, what whether want. it's economic or or whatever kind of way. It's it's slavery. Basically, they're not satisfied with the level of control they already have over us. They want more. Want uh, more. Back to the European uh, Union. You know, a couple things I've noticed that they have accomplished is late last year the European Union released a uh, something they just voted on. They had a separate council. Uh, of scientists that uh, was an advisory committee to the European Union they voted on basically that what they did is they very explicitly declared that those who believed in creationism were declared enemies of the state and a threat to democracy right uh, which it's just un unheard of to think that grown adults would be saying these kind of words. It's just almost like Nazism all over again. But they've actually made this official declaration that not only are you uh, backward and primitive and believing that God created the world, but you're actually a threat to those of us. And we know the next step will be will be tangible actions. The other thing I've noticed is that there are certain countries, not all countries are equal in the European Union. There's a heavy involvement from France, particularly Germany in the European Union. And Germany is able to bring all sorts of real influences in their laws, like uh, their ban on homeschooling, where they now... Uh, they even you, arrested a couple it, of people and it, put them in jail for homeschooling well, their children. Well, what right? happens is, is that they take your children and they put them under psychiatric care if they find your homeschooling. And we had some some Baptist missionaries from the from America that had to be smuggled out of there to save their kids from being taken away from them. Well, when you bring it up there, having been to Europe a couple of times, when you bring it up there, they Europeans generally get very weird about it. They go, how do you socialize your kids? <laughs> yeah. How do you yeah. socialize? But aren't these the kind of things that happen when you have a handful of unelected people start writing the rules for a whole region? Well, and also we're talking about this is, this is basic fascism. It's a... The purpose of the state is to advance the global corporate interests. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's of value is the economic interests of the global corporation. Mm -hmm. And they're godless by nature. Right. There's no morals. There's no values. They're happy to use slaves. And God is out of the mm -hmm. equation. So In fact, they would prefer slaves because one thing they do need is stability. They need stability to get steady and rise in corporate profits. So that, that, that's why so many even of our American uh, companies went over and made these banana republics and other places where they put a tin pot dictator mm -hmm. in charge is because under the iron boot they create a stability that allows an uninterrupted flow of uh, money and capital that comes out of the country. And, and now they're so brazen as to see the same opportunity with uh, Western countries like our own. Well, and unfortunately human beings don't learn from history. It's like, you know, your child is born, you gotta you got to educate that child from the beginning. It's not born with any advantage of prior learning. So p people ought to know that slavery doesn't work. We've had, you know, 5,000 years of history, and every time people have been enslaved, the ones who end up at the bottom are the, the people who tried to enslave them. If anybody wants to know how the corporate state evolves and behaves, just has to look at corporate you know, Germany, the Nazism work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because over time what they do is they, you know, they're going to open up the gateway here to immigration. They'll have a lot of um, Muslims coming in throughout Europe, which is happening to depress wages at the lower end of the scale. They can get them to work in the lower class jobs. We're, we do better with the Spanish. The Spanish have a wonderful work ethic. And, you know, they flood the United States and take up the lower class jobs. But in, in Europe, with the Islamic coming in, they they basically then decide in multiculturalism, hate crimes get further expanded to you can't even say anything negative about Islam. If you criticize it at all, you're the one who's guilty of a hate crime. And that's why you're, the second most popular baby name in Britain is now Muhammad. Well, 
and as this all this happens, you know, again, people go along with it, and in the process, lose their own freedoms and lose their own ability to control their economic destiny. The only winners of this are the multinational corporations and the managers and owners who operate the multinational corporations. Mm-hmm. Everybody else loses. Now you're not you're you're not against business or free enterprise, correct? Not at I mean, all. You, you've you've participated in that. I, I also am a small businessman and entrepreneur myself. I've benefited from free inter, free enterprise. It's an honorable activity to do to generate commerce, to generate wealth and income, and take take care of your uh, families and those of others. But when it gets to the, the this the, the corporate environment where you you must have excessive profits quarter after quarter higher than before, that requires them to take desperate measures to keep raising the bar for what investors and boards require. Well, mostly that happens because of greed. What happens, people, the business has to have morals. You can't have business without morals. You can't have any human activity without morals. And the morals are the fundamental morals we were all taught. Part of that is, you know, we fought a bloody battle with labor unions in the 20s and 30s, and regardless of what people think today about labor unions, we did determine that Marx was going to be wrong and that we were going to demand that labor be considered part of the capital equation, since the people were going to get paid for their labor and that they were going to earn a living wage. That's when we decided to build a middle class. Uh, If we reverse that and say, no, it's okay to go use slaves, well, you know, at the end of the Civil War, we, decide, we decided that slavery was immoral. It was against God's law. Right. And it was also stupid business, that we didn't need slaves in order to operate effective businesses of any kind, including cotton plantation businesses. And if I understand, the rest of the world had already given up on it for the most part because of the futility of it. Well, slavery doesn't work. Uh, it's a good short-term idea. And it's one of those things that you people think, well, this is going to be great. It's just another form of theft. And mm-hmm. theft doesn't work uh, mm-hmm. it, for a whole set of reasons. I mean, ultimately, you can't enslave people. Mm-hmm. It's immoral and it doesn't work. Now, uh, you... People reject it. They have resist it. Uh, they uh, run away. They kill you. They uh, break the system. I mean, they, they fight it. There's all kinds of things they do besides it being just immoral. Mm-hmm. You've corrupted yourself and corrupted your own values and life and living and perspective in the process of succumbing to that evil. Now, we, we've talked about this corporate structure um, somewhat. Is there not, you, you're more well-skilled in this information than I am, isn't there a relationship between the term fascism and the term corporatism? And if so, can you explain that? Really? Well, corporatism, I mean, they're, they're somewhat separate. Corporatism really just refers to corporate thinking, and we can have all kinds of corporate thinking. A corporate state is basically a fascist state, so that once the purpose of the state is to, you know, serve the corporations and only the corporate interests, the state is fascist in nature. It um, does not value individual liberties. It doesn't look at individual freedoms or the development of people as the primary goal. It looks at the development of business you know, the exploitation of labor, the exploitation of resources, and it, it makes profit to God. If now, you to, go in that direction, you know, you've, for, you've lost your human values. To have a healthy society in a, in, a, in a healthy sovereign state does not yet require you go to the other extreme and go to the extremes of socialism and communism where the state owns everything, quote, for the common good, unquote. That's another another aberration because it just concentrates power in the hands of the state and the bureaucrats who run the state. I mean, the, you know, basic Christian values um, look to the individual and have confidence that respecting individuals is the way to proceed. Now, that may not maximize profits because you're paying living wages to your employees. But in the process, you sustain a loyal labor force and you create consumers for the goods that you're producing. It requires long-term thinking and moral thinking to understand that that's in everybody's best interest. 
Now, now, rather than having government coercion of those kind of activities, which I find often does not work because the government officials are bought and paid for by the, the corporate people who do not want those behaviors, having a strong and active, awake society that applies good, solid peer pressure to others in their community to behave in that function is probably the best and safest long-term way to achieve those goals, right? I agree. I mean, you got to start out with, how you moral education of children. You gotta make your kids aware that, you know, things are wrong and right, uh, not just because you say so, but because that's how the way human beings are created, it's how the world exists. You know, lying is wrong for all kinds of different reasons. It basically is um, a negation of value. It's a negation of light. It's a negation of truth. And if you don't operate in light and truth, you're not going to go very far. Do you think these principles are being taught at the current classes at Harvard, the ones that are going through the Absolutely same path? Absolutely not. Of- they don't care at all. They're, Harvard has come to be, you know, again, a quantitative mathematical analysis, and the only thing that is measured or valued are the material entities. If you really try to attend a Harvard business class, or if you try to uh, an economics class, or the political classes, and enter issues of morality or right and wrong, you might be tolerated and listened to, but you know the real politics that dominates their thinking doesn't allow any room for moral calculations. Hmm. And I found very few professors at Harvard that were willing to raise those questions and think by them. I found some both on the left and right that understood the value of morals, and I spent time with them and I sought them out. But they were by no means the majority. Mm. No, no, no wonder they must squash homeschooling because these children might otherwise incidentally be taught such kind of values. And well, that's the thing, is, and the parents can't be relied upon because the parents are going to want the kids to turn out to be moral human beings that they're going to be proud of. What the public school wants, what the state wants, is you know uh, producers who won't cause any problems, and who can be allow their labor to be exploited mm-hmm. without much return. And Uncle Joe Stalin understood that very well. That's why he had to get kids away from their parents and began training them, well, correct? Well, so did the Nazis. The Nazis had lots of systems where they, the Nazis attacked the families just like the communists attacked the families. Hmm. They, you know, they did not want, they wanted state control. The children were made into Hitler youth as early as they could be put into it. Hmm. So the family and the church are two probably the greatest threats that this corporatism slash fascism has to face. Right, and it also then, the fascism attacks nation states. It attacks the idea, just like they attack the idea of God and families, they say, well, nation states, like George Soros says, or when kings had castles, or, you know, like uh, on the right, David Rockefeller says, you know, my corporations op- operate in 60 countries, why do I need your currency or your laws or to respect your boundaries. Uh, well, the, the truth is human beings on a moral basis need families. They need mothers and fathers. They need states. We need identification. Human beings are, began as tribal people. You know, around the world, we were first tribal, uh, relating to small communities as, as such. That's part of human nature. Try to take that out of people and substitute it with bureaucracy and corporate states. Uh, you know, you quickly remove God, you remove morality, and people don't have a moral compass with which to live their lives. Yeah, people should really look at what happened to to Russia when the the wall came down, and basically you pulled the only ideological underpinnings they had with communism, and they were left. You know, they're wonderful, wonderful people, but but largely a shell without that underpinning that they put their whole foundation upon it almost reminds me of the Romanian orphans that didn't have any kind of uh, loving supportive environment around them to grow and it stunted their growth because they were isolated from human interaction and 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 a whole society can almost become that way when they become separated Mm -hmm. from the the connections to family and faith and community uh, they're almost orphans in, in a fact and become stunted in their in their philosophical and spiritual growth. Yeah, and people get to be so, you know, sophisticated and, and at Harvard and the universities they're supposed to be so 
educated and urbane that they think it's too simple-minded to believe in God and family and have morals as your primary concern. Yeah. Well, we should have learned over and over and over again in human history that societies that go down these paths end up in the dustbin. Mm-hmm. That the societies that you know thrive are societies that were constituted as moral societies and mm-hmm. remain moral societies and cared about these values. 